Hello and welcome. I am starting a new series of videos all about working with data. Working with data using in JavaScript, uh, in particular using the P5.js JavaScript framework. But of course, this, this topic is much bigger than any one library or framework or programming language. It's really about there's this world out there and there's lots of stuff. You could get that stuff and use it in a project and why might you want to do that and what kinds of results can you get with that. And, and really, I want to focus on how to do that. So what I have here is a kind of like quick demonstration. I would love to just sit here and show you like 100 amazing and interesting projects made with data on the web. But uh, I'm just going to show you one, which is a particular, I think, relates to kind of what the kinds of things I'm hoping to demonstrate in these videos is this project called the Wind Map. It's by Fernanda Villegas and Martin Wattenberg. And you can see here there is a map of the United States. There is, are these white streaks flowing across the map. And you can imagine there's some data, underlying data, latitudes and longitudes, wind speeds, wind direction. And somehow that data is being read. And then the data is being interpreted and manifested through drawing. So thicker white lines for higher wind speed, lines in a particular direction for a particular uh, wind direction. And so how, do, how, what are the building blocks of a project like this? What are all the pieces? How do you read the data? How do you cycle through the data? How do you draw with the data? And what if the data comes from this thing called an API, which requires you to like log in and have like a secret key and all this horribly scary, strange stuff. I would like to make this seem like a very easy and welcoming, friendly thing for you to be able to do. That's my goal here. So in this first video, what I want to do is to make a list of the kinds of ways you might find data. And I'm, I've got a few like examples over here, but I think just to get away from the computer for a second, um, I'm going to move over here. Hello <laughs> again. So let's think about this, this question. So first of all, I, I've got to go back to the computer again. Let's say you're interested in, uh, in a particular kind of thing. Like you like flowers. Flowers, that's like your thing. Oh boy, I really should have planned for this in advance. But let's say flowers is your thing. So you might Google flowers, and then you're going to get this, uh, you're going to get all this commercial stuff trying to sell you flowers. Well, I really just want to know how to grow flowers. I'm really off topic. I don't care. How to grow beautiful flowers. OK, whatever. So you know, I could go here and be like, oh, look, here's this website about flower gardens, and I want to get some data about flowers. I'm not really getting anywhere. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, I could be, I could be a much better Googler, and I could say flower data base. Da no, not to forget database, flower data data. So now, ah, flower data sets. Now I'm getting somewhere. The point of what I'm doing is, is actually not, is to like not, is just to like be sort of random here. This will happen to you. You have an interest in a data, piece of kind of data, and you're Googling around, you're finding things. What are you going to find? So first of all, I think there's two approaches to a project. One is you actually have an interest and you're looking for a particular kind of data. But right now, you might say to yourself, I'll do that later. I'm just going to use some existing examples of data sets that are out there that you, me, I'm the, that I am <laughs> going to show you how to do. But, 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 but there is a reason for talking about this. So you're going to come across and you're going to see a lot of things. So first of all, the data could come in a variety of formats. Here's a list of some formats that you might see. CSV, what is that? XML, what is that? JSON, what is that? Uh, you know, you might just find a text file. You might just find a PDF. Or you might actually not find any of these formats, but you see the data right there on the web page. I mean, that data is there. How do you get access to that if it's not in one of these quote unquote formats? And then there's this sort of like side discussion of like, what if you see this word API? So what you're looking for when working with data is you want to find somebody on the internet who says, I have this data. It's about flowers, and I would like you to have it. Please enjoy it. And I've prepared it for you with examples and documentation to make it easy for you. And a particular key word in the context of what we're looking for is you might be looking for uh, data of the format JSON. The reason why you might be looking for this is JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Hmm, that might be convenient, right? Because we, you, uh, I have spent many a, many a day making videos about JavaScript object notation. Because I could say, here's a flower, and its name is sunflower, and its color is like 
uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the, it's fine. Whatever, you get the idea. I could put like a variable for its color. I could have a variable for, this is, I, I went off, I, I went on, I was thinking about flowers and I lost my train of thought. But, um, so this is JavaScript object notation. It's how you write objects into your code. It turns out that this data format is exactly the same as this. Now there's a little bit of nuance there of some slight differences in kind of, but if you find data that's been prepared, it's like somebody said, oh, are you programming in JavaScript? Would you like data made for you to use? Here it is. So this is an ideal scenario. You're happy if you find data in this JavaScript object notation. So, and I'm, the next video I'm going to make is essentially all about what that is and the actual syntax. Now, another format of data that you might find very intuitive and familiar to work with is this format known as CSV. Now, CSV can take, it is a particular uh, kind of a larger format, which I really mean tabular data. So what does it mean for data to be in a table? You know, you have, you know, name, age, gender, Dan, 42, male. Okay, now I just, that's how old I am. <laughs> Let's just get that out there on the internet. I, I'm youthful at heart though. Um, and then uh, 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 there's some other data there. I could put my phone number and I could say my phone number and like make this video even more embarrassing. But um, so you're familiar with this probably. Like here is, uh, whoops, that's the wrong thing I was going to open. Like Google Docs, those are, that's tabular data. And in fact, you can have a Google spreadsheet and access that Google spreadsheet in your JavaScript program. And in fact, you can tie that to a Google form. So this is a topic that I want to explore. Um, uh, the reason why I'm mentioning CSV as a particular uh, format is that what uh, a kind of raw format for tabular data is to have the, uh, all of the cells separated by commas. So you can see an example of this. Here is a table, a comma separated values, the first row being the header, x, y, diameter, name, the next row being some values, the next row being some values. And in fact, this is a P5 sketch that kind of loads that and using the, the data puts the things on the screen. So at some point I'll demonstrate that in uh, more detail in a particular video dedicated to just CSV. There's lots of uh, CSV data out there. Here's one that I think is worth kind of interesting to look at. Actually, let me um, uh, right here. This is a uh, city bike data. City bike is a bike sharing pro uh, uh, a bike sharing system in New York City, and they have all of the trip data. So the date, the latitude, the longitude, the address, where it was picked up, the time is a huge data set. How would you load that data set? Read through that data set? Maybe draw you know lines of people riding their bikes all over the map of New York City. So this is the kind of thing that I want to explore in these sets of videos. So that's really um, when I that's really what I've got here with CSV data and JSON data. Now XML is another standardized format for data. These three up here are really like standardized format. What I mean by standardized format is you the human being want to look at data in a nice presented way. Like, like uh, if you're interested in movies, I don't know why I'm plugging some IMDB here, but um, you could go to this website and be like, oh, look at all this data here, and I can see it, and I can soak it in, and I can find the movie that I'm interested in, and yay. But this is not uh, useful for a computer to read. Um, it's, it's really, this is designed visually for you to look at with your eyes, and you could make the same argument that uh, this Google Doc has actually done that as well, with like column headings and colors and like lines of grids, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> But the point of these data formats, if I come back over here, is that these are all designed for computers to read. There's commas separating everything. There's this programming syntax that has kind of got curly uh, brackets and semicolons and quotes and commas. So it's this standardized format. So that's sort of, if you can find a standardized format, that's a good thing. Uh, P5 has a particular set of functions that allow you to read JSON data very easily, read CSV data very easily, read XML data in a slightly trickier way, but it works. But you might also be in a scenario at some point where you just found the data not in a format that's meant for a computer to read. Like there's just a text file with a lot of stuff in it, or there's just a web page and it's all there, but it's like a mess and it's not in a standard format or some PDF document. So at some point I would like to make a one video to sort of talk about how you might deal with some scenarios like that if you find a particular piece of data online, but it's not sort of handed to you in this nice, friendly JSON way. And then, of course, there's this question of API. Now, if you find, uh, if you have a fixed data set, just sort of like this is the data, it might come as a file, but if there's a huge data set or a data set that's changing over time, like 
Twitter is a data set that's changing over time because people are posting to it continuously. You know, all the articles that appeared in the New York Times in 1950, that's not really changing over time. I don't think, unless we could do time travel. But anyway, you, you could download that and have that. So an API is, stands for Application Programming Interface, meaning you're writing an application, somebody else has an application, that other person says like, oh, I would love for your application to talk to mine, so I'm gonna make an interface for those two things to talk to each other, and that interface might be sending data in one of these formats back and forth. So the tricky thing is, if just to use the New York Times as an example, the New York Times has an API, it's very nice of them. They're like, hey, you know what? We have this newspaper and all this stuff and why don't you read it like, like a human being or why doesn't your computer program read it? And we'll make it easier by giving it to you in an API. But you've got to log in, get an account, get a secret key, figure out how to query the API. How do you say, I want the articles from this year or from that have this certain keyword in them? And so that's the kind of thing we're gonna do. And just to like run through a few examples of that, like, uh, for example, uh, here, if I'm interested in flowers, um, this is me querying the New York Times article search. I didn't try these examples to see if they worked. Let me try a different one. Oh, let's try uh, this one. I'm going to uh, search for the word computer. This is very sad. My internet. <laughs> Uh, the way I was working, I'm making a video. Where I'll have to go look at why the New York Times one didn't work. But uh, one of the APIs that I'm going to uh, spend some time showing you is an API called WordNick. Let me move this over here, where you can see here uh, I've put in the word Apple, and I've clicked this button called Examples, and WordNick is giving me back a set of example sentences that have the word Apple in it. Uh, this is Google Image Search, which I passed it the word Apple, and I'm getting some, you know, I, I like flowers better. Let's go back to flower. Um, and you can see I'm getting a whole bunch of flower images. So this API, meaning application programming interface, Google has a server, I have a program, those two programs are talking to each other because Google has this API built. But the point is I, I can't just download all of Google's data as like a big CSV, I've got to query that API. So how does that work? Uh, Instagram's another one, flower, uh, whoops. Uh, <laughs> let's just turn that off. <laughs> Uh, I have to think, uh, Google Sheets we talked about. Okay, so that's kind of the basic, <laughs> I don't know how well this went. You, you should, anybody, uh, it's too late now because you've already watched this video if you're watching it now, but I, I'm gonna get into the next video that I'm gonna make is only really gonna be about what is the JSON format, how does it work, how do you make, how do you pull the J data format of the JSON into your project and do something with it. So that's what I'm gonna do in a few short minutes um, in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. <laughs> Wait, I...